Hello, and welcome to another video in the Script Case Macros course. So in this course, we're going through all the macros. Today, we're looking at the SC Lookup macro, and we're showing you how to use them. My name is Nate Carpenter, and I'm the Script Case instructor leading this course. So today, we're looking at SC Lookup. SC Lookup is just a macro to execute a SQL select statement and return the result. So we're using SQL for this example, and it just returns the result in an array. So look, let's go ahead and look at the documentation for how this works. So this is the script case macro documentation. You can access this on the website. So there's our SC lookup macro there. And first we need to define the data set, then the SQL command, and then the connection, which is optional if we have multiple connections. So as you can see, it's optional. We're not going to use it today. But let's look at the data set. So the data set is an array where our data is going to be returned from the, from the uh, select. So here's an example here. There's a data set, and then we can access it as an array inside the curly braces because it's a script case variable. So you can pull those different rows out um, and then row items there, as you would expect from any kind of SQL return. And then we need to look at what to do if there's an error. So if there's an error, it's going to return false in the data set, and then it's going to save the error to another variable. So it's going to be the data set, whatever we name that, underscore ERRO. We also need to make sure that data was actually returned. If there is no data returned, then our data set variable is not going to be set, and we could get an error if we try to access something out of that. So here's an example of how that is done. First, we check if it was equal to false, and then we can output that error using that error variable that script case creates. Then we check if it's empty. If it's empty, then we can just echo out that there was no return data, and then otherwise it was successful and there was data returned, and we can access that data right there. We can also use global variables inside of our select statement as well, just like you would expect. And then down here, you can see the scope of this macro where it can be used. So let's go ahead and go over to script case and get started with this. So here we are, we have a blank application inside of our script case development environment. And let's go ahead and go to our SQL builder to build a select statement. So this is an easy way to build a select statement using script case, the SQL builder. You could of course do this all by yourself, just write this all out by yourself, but this is kind of easy. So we're going to use our film table. So we just select our table here, hit confirm. And then we need to choose our fields. So let me just choose um, one of the fields here. So let's just do the film ID and then click confirm on that. So there's our fields and let's set some conditions. So let's say where the, um, the lease year right here is equal to 2006. So it's going to get all the films from 2006. And then we can go over to run and there's our query and we can go ahead and run it and get all of our results here. So there's all of our results. Let's go ahead and edit this just a little bit. So let's go ahead and make it so that we count all the films um, from that release here. So we're just going to do a count all on those. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works. And there we go, it works. And it's getting 1,000 uh, 1, films from that year that are in our database. So let's go ahead and copy the select statement and take it over to our blank application so we can run it. So we're going to create an SQL variable and we're going to set it equal to that select statement we just created there. So there is our select query right there. Now we need to use SE lookup to go ahead and run this. So we put in the SE lookup macro like so, open parentheses. We're going to name our data set just like it was up here. So that's the first item we need to put in and then the SQL command and we're not going to worry about connection for now. So I'm going to call it, call it RS. That's going to be our data set, like so. And then SQL is going to be our SQL command, that variable right there. And then that's going to run the command. And then we can go ahead and get data out of it. So for now, let's just var dump this result to the screen. So whatever is returned is just going to be dumped to the screen so we can look at what it does. So I put it in the curly braces because it's a script case variable. Put the semicolon after it, and let's go ahead and run this. So this should immediately dump everything out the screen. And there we go. So we have one row here with one item in it, one field in it. That is our count. If we edited this so that it returned an actual field, so we get a, a row for each film, each film record in there, we would get a multi-dimensional array. 
So as you can see, there's a thousand items in that array, quite large, but then each one has a row and then a field in it for the film ID right there. So those are two different ways. Let's return it back to the count. That's what we're going to use for this. And now let's handle if it's empty or if it's an error. So the first thing we need to do, um, like we saw in the documentation, is check if it is equal to false. So we're going to put an if statement in here, and we're going to check if rs exactly equals false. If it exactly equals false, then it is going to have an error condition. So in that case, we're just going to echo out that there was an error and then what that error was. So error, semicolon, space, and then we need to get that error variable that script case automatically creates. So just like that, we're going to use it in the curly braces. And the first part of it is going to be our data set variable name. So it's going to be rs in this case. So it's going to be in the curly braces rs underscore and that second part erro, like so. So that'll output the error that was returned from the script case uh, from the SQL execution. And then we're going to check if RS is empty. So if there was no error, then we just to make sure that something was actually returned. So again, checking if RS in the curly braces is empty using the PHP empty. And we're going to put that as an else if inside of this if structure here. So it only executes if there was not an error. And then we just need to echo out some text telling us that there was no data returned. So error, semicolon, space, no data returned. That way we know what happened. And these errors and empty conditions could be handled however you wanted to. This is just one example of how to do them. And then finally, we assume then that everything was successful. There was no errors and data was returned. So we can tell you the number of the films um, from that year. So number of films from 2006, colon, space, and then RS, it's going to be the first row and then the first uh, field. So RS00, zero, zero, and concatenated that together with the string, and that should work. Okay, so everything should be set up and ready to run now. So let's go ahead and run this. We should get a successful condition on the first run here. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. There we go. So number of fields from 2006 is 1000. Now let's go ahead and change this so that nothing is returned. So this should get us a zero count this time because it's doing a count. So something is always going to be returned in this case. So let's change it from a count field uh, to an actual field. So we're going to get the film ID again, and this should return an empty data set. So go ahead and run this. And there we go. Error, no data returned. So now let's introduce an error into our SQL syntax so that we get an SQL error. So I'm just going to take the where out. So this no longer makes sense as an SQL statement. And let's go ahead and run this. There we go. So there's an error just like you would see if you use phpMyAdmin or something to execute an SQL statement. So that way you can use it to debug to see what was wrong and fix your SQL statement. So I can see that there's no where there the where in and now this works correctly and we shouldn't get any errors. So that's how you use SE lookup using a script case macro to execute SQL or any other database select statements.